Nice, I just finished my course on Udemy, my fourth course. Now it's time for the next step. Time to buy another course. Ooh. Yeah, checkout time. Pause, if this is you, I have one thing to say. We've all been there before, tutorial after tutorial, course after course, but you never end up making that project. The hardest thing that any new developer goes through is going from doing a course to building their own project. There's always a joke amongst developers that tutorial hell is a real thing. If you don't know what it is, it's basically never being able to build a project independent outside of a comfort of a tutorial or a course. You constantly have to rely on a project. You constantly have to rely on a video to build anything and you can't just do it on your own. You always see the same videos on YouTube telling you to build your own projects, build your own projects, build your own projects. Did I mention that you have to build your own projects? But why is it so hard to make that transition? Even though taking a course and building a project through the course feels like you're making progress, in reality, it's just a crutch. The biggest problem is that it feels, it just feels like you're learning. And in general, we always wanna keep moving forward. But when you're building a project, there's just so many roadblocks that hit your way that you just can't experience through a course. In a tutorial, you are physically moving your fingers along with the video, but you never really put into time and consideration about the architecture. What am I actually building? What should my backend model look like if I'm building Project X? Did I really think about what my front end is going to be like? All of these questions are part of a developer process before you even start coding. The with the tutorial, however, all of that thinking is already done for you. And if you think that as an experienced developer that you just know these things right off the bat, that is far from the case. With experience, you do get some type of familiarity, but I can assure you that these course creators, they're not just coming up with these projects and doing this thing on the fly without any mistakes. All the mistakes have already been made and in these videos, they're just showing you the edited version so it feels a lot more smooth whenever they're building something out. Trust me when I say this, that I've been coding for eight years and I still make mistakes. To build a project, you have to make mistakes. But when you do a tutorial, those mistakes are just removed from your development process. Okay, so everything I said so far is pretty vanilla advice. You've probably already heard this before. Build a project, make mistakes, make mistakes, build a project. That's how you're gonna learn. But again, it's coming back to the same problem. Why is it so hard to start? I worked with a client recently and it just dawned on me when we were working together that starting the project is probably one of the hardest part. Do you start from the back end? Do you start from the front end? Do I build out auth? What am I actually trying to build? All these questions are things that you need to answer, but where do you actually start? Sometimes it just feels like I know how to code, but my hands aren't moving because there's really no good starting point. That's when I realized it can get really hectic. And I understand that this is probably the hardest part. How do you plan out your project? It can get so bad that sometimes, you know what you end up doing? Going back to a tutorial, going back to a course, it feels like you can't build anything unless you have those crutches. And that's where I want you to get out of that cycle, to not rinse and repeat the same process over and over again. Because if you can't build a project on your own, then are you actually building it yourself or are you just watching someone else do it? I sucked at drawing when I was a kid and I still suck at it now, but I thought I was really, really good because I was able to put my paper over the drawing itself and then trace over it. And I said, wow, I'm such a good artist. But when I actually tried to draw it myself, I it was nowhere near close to what I was doing when I was tracing. And that's what following a tutorial sometimes feels like. You're just tracing over what someone has already done. That's why it feels so empty because tracing over something or copying someone else's code is not really your own. And unfortunately, the sense of accomplishment is not quite there because it wasn't something that you came up with. I don't wanna keep harping on the same points. That's not what this video is about. I wanna show you actionable steps on how to actually start your own project and not make the mistakes that a lot of new developers make when starting off. I wanna take this from a different angle and show you how to plan out a new project using a Trello board. I gotta give you a warning that this content can be a little dry now, but if you made it this far, then you obviously came here for a reason and you need to break out of the cycle of tutorial hell. And I haven't seen any videos like this. So come with me as I help you organize and build out your project. To make this a little bit easier, I did create all the tasks already and I'll just go one by one and discuss how we can translate a real world application and turn them into tickets and they'll work backwards from it. 
I'm going to use a to-do app called Todoist as an example project of how I would organize my thoughts if I was to try to get this work done. To save you some time, I cr already created a majority of these tickets, so we're just gonna go through each one and how I would separate the tasks and responsibilities. As I go over each one, I hope it really encourages you to think about your projects in a different way versus just, I'm gonna start coding. Because when you just start coding, you're kind of going into an abyss and not know where to start. Eventually you're gonna work on this and then you're gonna work on that. You're gonna do something completely different on the left-hand side. There's just so many different ways to tackle a project that sometimes the lack of organization makes it so much more difficult to actually finish a project. In the to-do apps, you have the ability to add a task. So I'm gonna do that right now. Task number one, buy groceries. And let's add a description. Let's buy some hamburger meats, buns, lettuce, add task. And then task number two, let's just say complete YouTube video, finish uh, recording and editing video, add task. The next thing that you can do with this is you could press cancel and then you could also remove a task. So let's press check mark, which will remove the task or delete the task. And if you want to see more details, you can see it that way. So obviously there's a lot of functionality with this, but as a new developer, when you're working on something like this, it can feel daunting. Do I do the front end? Do I do the back end? How do I break these tickets down? And one thing that I didn't even mention is that there's authentication. There's this little nice nav bar to show you that you're actually authenticated and you could work on these tasks because right now you don't want other people to view these tasks. So how would I build an app like Todoist? I build a Trello board. First thing that I highly recommend everyone to do is draw out the backend models. If you're using Postgres or some other database structure, it doesn't really matter. What I want you to focus on here is that you need to think about your backend models. So in this case, I created a ticket called draw out backend model via Excalibur draw or whatever uh, software you like to use. And in this situation, we have a task, we have a user and we have a comment. So let's go back to our task here and you can add another comment saying, I forgot the ketchup comment. Cool. So here we're not just going to go right into the code, but what we're thinking about is what does a task have? A task has a name a description, a due date, a priority. All of these things are keys and values that you need to consider when creating your backend model. Another thing we need to think about is a user. Who is the user? In my case, I have my personal email address as my user, and that is who I am. The last thing I wanna talk about here is the comments. When I create my comment model, what does a comment have? The comment will have a author, a creator, and some description. So these are little things that you have to consider when creating your backend models. So this is something that is very crucial to start off on your application. And the way I separated these cars are based on backlog, in progress, and complete. So if I'm gonna start on this, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna move this over here, and then I'm gonna start by project. So now I know that, hey, I need to focus on drawing out the backend model. When I finish that up, then I can move it over here. If you're curious what these green labels and yellow labels are, it's pretty simple. Um, what I did was I created a couple of labels called backend, front end, and maybe I could even call this one miscellaneous if you like and save it. This is a good way for me to quickly look at a ticket and not have to look into the details to understand if it's a backend ticket or a front end ticket. The next thing I want to talk about is authentication. Authentication is super important and really deserves a task of its own. So in this scenario, there's going to be a mixture of setting up authentication on the front end side and the back end side. So that's why um, in this example, I just added a little description called get started with clerk to give you some context of a potential authentication service that you can use. So as I'm moving these tickets along, you'll notice that, hey, I'm progressing. I'm removing the tickets from the backlog and actually getting it started. There's no real ordering of how I create these tickets, but I highly encourage you to come up with a mechanism or filter to figure out how you wanna prioritize these due dates. So essentially, as I'm setting up the backend models, the authentication, I'm just keep moving these tickets from left to right. So in this one specifically, I'm creating an endpoint for task, the get request, the post request, the put request, the delete, 
and then I'm creating another endpoint for the API comments. Some people really like to create the API endpoints first and then start building out the front end functionality. So maybe you'll work on the task form, the edit form, the lead task. Maybe you'll actually, you know, start setting up the actual project using Tailwind. It just really depends on how you want to go about working on this project. There is no secret formula, but what this really provides you is a outside view of, hey, what have I done so far? What do I need to do? And how many tickets are left for me to complete my project. I really love doing it this way. And to be honest, a lot of companies use some form of a Kanban board or a Jira board to really track your projects. If you're able to work in this kind of setting, then I have full confidence that you could work at any company because more or less, you're gonna be doing something like this. And I hope this example was helpful for you when building out a project for yourself. So there you have it. This is how I would organize my work and how I would translate my thoughts into reality. I highly encourage everyone that hasn't been able to start their own project to try this method. This will not only help you start, but it will also keep you accountable of how far along you are on your project. Am I 50% done? Am I 60% done? How close am I to this finish line? For me personally, I'm a big fan of micro goals. And what I mean by that is I don't like to have this large goal where it just feels so daunting. I like having little baby steps where I know that if I finish five of these, then I eventually I finish my goal. And that's what something like a Trello board or a combo board will give you. This is something that you could talk about with future employers where you can show them and tell them that, hey, I don't jump into my code right away. I like to think about my project, think about the limitations, think about the edge cases. I create tickets for them. And eventually that's how I start my project. Coding without a plan is basically driving without a map. And that is why it's so hard to start a project. One piece of advice that I would like to give is that if you feel like a ticket is too big, break that ticket down into smaller pieces. And eventually you will have micro goals within micro goals, which will eventually solve all your macro goals. Me showing you these tickets will eventually help you figure out how to break down your tickets to complete your project. And that's it. That's what I recommend. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe. My goal is to help you become a better software engineer. And if you resonate with that, then I encourage you to stay tuned for my future videos. And as usual, keep building developers. Your time will come.